Okay, welcome back. You've now spent a couple of weeks working on the fundamentals of creating web pages, and um, this week we're going to move on to the next stage, which is interactivity. But to sort of introduce that, I'd like to sort of think a little bit about the kind of web pages you've been creating. So, if you think about what happens when you load a web page, you're at your computer, this person on the left, and you're, for example, visiting the Coursera page. I represent by the Coursera logo, but this is the server that, that hosts the Coursera web page. What happens on the kind of page that we've been creating so far is that you type in a URL and send that request, and then the server finds the HTML page and the CSS and any of the images and sends it back to you. And that's the basic interaction we've been working on. Send a request and a whole page gets sent back to you. And, you know, that's perfectly good and that's well represents, you know, what web pages were like in the mid-90s, but a modern web page is actually far more interactive than that. Once you've loaded a page like the Coursera web page that you're on now, in fact, what happens is you spend a lot of time interacting. You will click on a video to make it play, and that the web page will respond by playing the video. Or similarly, you might sort of uh, click on a tab and it'll show you more information. Uh, you might hover over something and it'll show you a tooltip. There's lots of sort of consonants of bits of activity that are interacting directly with the web page in the browser. So these things aren't, well, most of them aren't sending requests back to the server and loading new pages they're sort of changing and manipulating the page you've got. And that's the kind of interactivity I'd like to talk to you today. And in particular, I'll focus on sort of the kind of interactivity you do with, with mouse clicks. So sort of clicking on, on elements or, or possibly hovering over elements. So this in kind of interactivity is enabled by a third language called JavaScript. So we've already looked at two of the, the main web languages, HTML in the first module, CSS in the second module. JavaScript is the third language. If, if HTML is for, um, is for the structure of a web page, CSS is for the, con for the style of a web page, well, JavaScript is for interactivity. And actually, we'll discover it's for many other things as we go throughout the courses. It's possibly the most complex of the, of the three web languages. But, but for now, we'll use it for interactivity. So you've, if you're new to programming, JavaScript is probably the hardest of the three languages to come because it really is a full programming language. Um, and, and I'll try to introduce things from the very beginning it, compared to many other programming languages. It isn't so complex. Um, but I've, we've also included some links to further materials if you feel you need some extra, extra reading or extra support uh, for learning JavaScript. On the other hand, if you are an existing programmer, there are a few things I'd like to point out. So many of you might have started programming with a language called Java, have experience with Java. And if you're in that position, the one thing I really want to stress is that JavaScript is not Java. Um, though the names are similar, actually they're very different languages. So JavaScript came out at about the same time as Java was quite a sort of exciting new language and as a marketing spin, they sort of tried to align it with, with Java. Uh, and in fact, JavaScript isn't really the, the official name. The official name is ECMA script. But why I'm stressing this is that actually, even though JavaScript has a very similar syntax to Java, it's actually a very different language. A lot of the principles of JavaScript underlying them are very different conceptually for how things work in Java, and in fact in many other languages such as C, Ruby, Python, etc. So there, I'll, throughout this course I'll point out a number of moments where we'll be doing something in JavaScript which seems really, really strange to somebody with a background in Java or most other programming languages, but is, is perfectly fine JavaScript. So even if you're used to programming another language, there is still quite a few things to learn, that, um, and I will try my best to highlight them wherever possible. So now we know what we need to do. Um, in the next video, I'll start taking you through the very basics of writing some interactive JavaScript. Mm -hmm.